Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to continue with the urinary system, and we're going to talk about the events that go on in the proximal convoluted tubule, or PCT, of the nephron. Now, the overall function of the urinary system is going to be to get rid of waste from the blood to get rid of excess water if we have a fluid volume that's too high. Uh, so that's going to be involved in regulation of blood pressure as well. And also, if there's really anything that's in excess, then the kidneys need to get rid of that. That's how we eliminate it from our body. And the filtration of that blood is going to occur in the glomerulus, and we talked about that in the previous video. Now, most cellular processes are very specific. Okay, so if we wanted to, say, get glucose into a cell like a skeletal muscle, the skeletal muscle, if it needs more glucose, can respond by putting more uh, carrier proteins in the membrane of it that allow more glucose to enter. And only glucose can enter through that carrier, right? In contrast, the glomerulus, when it filters, remember, it's not specific. It pretty much filters everything that's below a certain size. So it filters sodium. It filters potassium, really any ion. It filters magnesium, calcium, chloride, bicarbonate. Um, it filters glucose. It filters amino acids, vitamins, all sorts of stuff, and even small proteins, peptides. Okay? And obviously, a lot of this stuff we don't want to get rid of, right? For example, uh, we usually don't want to get rid of glucose, right? We don't want to get rid of amino acids, so those are two what I might call goodies that we may actually not want to get rid of. And then some of these other things like sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, ions, uh, we might need to get rid of some, but we certainly don't need to get rid of all of them. So the major function of the proximal convoluted tubule is really going to be the reabsorption of some of those goodies that ended up being filtered by the glomerulus, but we really don't want to get rid of them. We want to reabsorb them back into the blood. And that's going to be through a process called tubular reabsorption. Okay, so when we're looking at the proximal convoluted tubule, I try to draw it kind of a zigzag like this because it is convoluted, okay? And it's proximal because it's directly adjacent to the glomerulus, okay? Now, running next to the proximal convoluted tubule, we have a set of capillaries called paratubular capillaries, okay? And it turns out that in the proximal convoluted tubule, we can actually use active transport to um, actively move all of these substances that we may not want to get rid of back into the paratubular capillaries. And so instead of just being eliminated in the urine, if they just went all the way through here, we end up not losing them and they're reabsorbed back into the blood. Okay? And that's a concept called tubular reabsorption. Remember, some of these things we may not want to get rid of. Okay? And so the glomerulus doesn't really care. It doesn't see particular molecules or ions. It just filters everything below a particular size. But we may not want to get rid of these. And so the job of the proximal convoluted tubule is going to be to actively transport these substances out of the tubules and into these capillaries that will then ultimately just lead back into the general circulation. Okay. And so again, some of the things that are going to be reabsorbed are going to be sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, those are some cations, chloride, bicarbonate, those are some anions, and then also some water. Now, the water that gets reabsorbed through the proximal convoluted tubule is what we call obligatory water reabsorption. Okay. And this also occurs in what we call the loop of Henle, which we'll discuss in the next video. Uh, the reason water gets absorbed here is because water likes to follow salt or sodium. And so whenever sodium gets reabsorbed into the blood, water will just follow it. It is obliged or it's obligatory to follow the salt. And so you really don't have to do any work to reabsorb the water. It will just follow the sodium and some other ions as they're reabsorbed. Okay, But we do get reabsorption of water here. We also get reabsorption of glucose, amino acids. We certainly don't want to get rid of a lot of those. Um, small proteins, vitamins, definitely don't want to get rid of a lot of those. And even some waste products. Um, some of these waste products may actually be useful in small amounts, such as uric acid. It turns out that uric acid is a very important antioxidant 
in human blood. And so we may want to actually keep some of that in the blood, believe it or not, and so we can actually reabsorb that uric acid into the paratubular capillaries. Okay, And this is a process called tubular reabsorption. Tubular secretion is the opposite process, is reabsorption. So some of these substances, maybe we have excess of them, or they're waste products. For example, ammonia, NH4+, or we might call it ammonium, that is a waste product. Creatinine, that is also a waste product. Now, depending on how much there is in the blood, urea and uric acid uh, don't necessarily have to be waste products. But if there's excess of any of these, or they're just simply waste products, then we want to actually remove them from the blood. Um, for example, um, urea is a product of amino acid breakdown. And when urea builds up, it can actually cause problems for neurons and lead to their death. The same thing is actually true of ammonia. And so we'd like to get rid of these things if their concentration goes up in the blood. Same thing with uric acid, because that could cause gout if it becomes too elevated. Same thing with creatinine. And so we do a process called a tubular secretion. And in this process, sometimes it's passive transport, other times it's active transport. But in any case, with tubular secretion, these substances are moved the opposite direction. They're initially in the blood, so they're moving through these paratubular capillaries. And then they're secreted from the blood, initially into the interstitial area right here, and then into the tubule, okay, the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay. So in the end, the function of the proximal convoluted tubule is going to be reabsorption of all of these goodies, things that were filtered by the glomerulus because the glomerulus doesn't care about the identity of the molecular ion. If it fits through the pores of the glomerular capillaries, then it goes through, okay, and it winds up in the PCT, all right? And we need to reabsorb these, otherwise we'd be in trouble. Okay, so they need to go back into the general circulation. But also there's waste products or things that might be in excess, okay? and we need to get rid of those from the blood. And so they're secreted from the paratubular capillaries, um, initially into the interstitial area here, but then into the proximal convoluted tubule. And anything that's left in here at this point is going to move into the loop of Henle, specifically the descending loop of Henle, which we'll cover in the next video, and it will go on, and there's other processes that occur there. Okay? Now, before we look at the microscopy of the proximal convoluted tubule, I want to once again remind you of this obligatory water reabsorption that takes place here and in the loop of Henle. This obligatory water reabsorption, you don't have to do any work to do it. Okay? That's because when sodium ions, in particular, are reabsorbed into the blood from this tubule, the water just follows it. Okay? Water likes to be around sodium ions. So when you reabsorb the sodium, it automatically results in the reabsorption of water. Water basically just follows via osmosis. Okay? When we get later into the tubule systems, in particular the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting ducts, we're going to see a different type of water absorption called facultative water reabsorption. That's a regulated process. This really isn't regulated, it just depends on how much sodium is reabsorbed into the blood. Okay? So hopefully the functions here of the proximal convoluted tubule make sense. What I want to do now is actually switch gears and actually look at some histology right here. So what we see right here in the center of the slide is the glomerulus. And we talked about that in the previous video. But if we look surrounding the glomerulus, we'll actually see some different types of tubules, and they look very different. These two right here, if we look at their lumens right here, the space between the cells, what we see is that it looks kind of cloudy. If you look at these, there's a little uh, cloudy looking material inside of that. Whereas these over here on the periphery on the left side, the lumen actually looks more or less open. Okay? When you see these lumens that look more open, this is actually what's called the distal convoluted tubule. Okay? Uh, that we're going to cover in a couple videos from now. In contrast, these tubules over here, where the lumens kind of look cloudy or a little bit filled up with some gunk, that's not what it is, it's not gunk, but these are proximal convoluted tubules. Okay? And the reason we see multiple of each is because they're convoluted. They kind of wrap around kind of like a snake. Okay? They snake around the glomerulus. 
Okay? So these two right here, these are proximal convoluted tubules, and then these over on the periphery on the left side that look more open inside their lumens and not as cloudy, these are the distal convoluted tubules. Okay? In any case, hopefully the functions of the proximal convoluted tubule make sense. In the next video, we're going to discuss the loop of Henle and also something called countercurrent multiplication, which is a very important process in the nephron. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.